Welcome to my channel Sai Surya's Academy. If you are new to my channel, then hit the subscribe button and support us. In the series of introduction to computers, we had already discussed about the introduction and the characteristics of computers and the applications of computers. And in now in today's video, we are going to discuss about the basic computer organization and functioning of a computer. In the olden days, the computers we have used to vacuum tubes, vacuum tubes, large and large processors for processing and for storing devices. And now everything has been changed into very small integrated chips and very small components for our usage. And now the basic computers can be divided into three parts. That is a input unit, a CPU and a output unit. We can see one by one in detail. First the input unit. The input unit consists of a keyboard or a mouse. We all know this. Keyboard and mouse. These are the two famous input devices. The other devices are joystick and so on. So, so now when using the input unit, what is the purpose of an input unit? Suppose when you want to run a program, when you want to multiply a two number, we cannot order a computer just by saying, computer, just multiply these two numbers. We cannot be able to say, we have to run a program, we have to write some coding and we have to give some instruction which can be understandable by the computer. For this purpose, for giving a data on the instructions, the input unit is used. We can feed our information through this input unit. And after feeding into the input unit, what happens? The CPU, this is the next part. The CPU consists of three parts. One, that is it's subdivided into three parts. One control unit. 2 memory unit, 3 arithmetic and logic unit or it can be said as a ALU. These are the 3 subdivisions. The control unit, first the control unit, it takes the overall control. That is after when it gets the input, the data or the instruction, it will process, it uses the memory unit whenever needed on the arithmetic and logic unit if any processing is needed it will use us and it takes the overall control and it finds the result after processing it finds the result and sends to the output unit this is the general process of the control unit and then next comes the memory unit the memory unit is divided into two types that is one is primary memory and the next one is secondary memory. We have to know the difference between the two. What is a primary memory and what is a secondary memory? The primary memory is also known as the internal memory and the secondary storage is called as the external memory. What does the internal memory do? It will take over control of all the processing. After it, when the input is received from the input unit, the memory will be stored. The overall the information will be stored in the primary memory. It is a that is it will be very active during the execution of the program till the output till it receives the output. After the processing of the particular program. It will be of that is it is a volatile memory. The primary memory is known as the volatile. That is, is during the execution only it will store the particular program in the in that primary memory. Volatile meaning is that is the information will be lost when the power is off. So after execution, this primary memory details will be erased. And the, all the details, the output will be stored in the secondary devices. That is the secondary devices example maybe that is the external devices which can be known as a 
the primary thing hard disk cds nowadays cds are, are also not available and then our usb pen drive everything comes under the secondary storage devices that is the output will be stored in the secondary storage devices the secondary storage devices is non volatile what is a non volatile that is when the information when it is stored in the hard disk or the usb it will not be lost even when the power is off we can have a store a large database include a music file a video file a word file a document file or whatever file everything can be stored under the secondary memory or the external memory now you will be very clear about the primary memory and the secondary memory and then next one comes the arithmetic and logic unit suppose when the program contains addition subtraction or whatever mathematical operation suppose it contains a arithmetic operation a logical operation or a, a, any comparison when you are using a relational operator everything comes under the arithmetic and the logic unit and then the last one output unit what is output unit this is the communication device between the user and the computer the famous output unit what we can say is the printer and then the monitor the system screen what we are viewing in a laptop or a desktop system or whatever thing is called the monitor which can also be known as a vdu that is nothing but the visual display unit so these are all the components or the units which are used in the basic computer organization now what happens when a particular program or when you want to find a multiply say for example we want to multiply a two number so what we will do we will first use the input unit it can be any say for example it can be a c program to multiply two numbers the input will be fed by the keyboard or the mouse this is how the how the functioning of a computer works even nowadays so after the information is received it will be moved the cpu takes over the control then the particular program will be loaded in the memory unit which is the primary memory or the internal memory and suppose if it has any calculations then the control unit will ask the storage unit or will ask the program to move to the arithmetic and logic unit it will takes control over the alu it will perform all the calculations through the internal memory on the alu and once again the result will be moved from the alu to the internal memory and after when the result is found it has to be moved to the output unit and simultaneously it can be stored in the secondary storage devices that is the hard disk what we are using so the cpu using the control unit takes the control of the internal memory arithmetic logic unit as well as the secondary storage devices till the output what we are getting is stored so these are all the the dotted lines represent the control flow that is the cpu control unit takes the control over the input unit as well as the output unit as well as within the cpu it can be able to communicate between the control unit memory unit and the alu unit that is the arithmetic and logic unit similarly the control unit after when the result is found it can be able to communicate with the output unit as well as store in the secondary storage okay these are the basic functioning of a computer even when you want to do any small program or work with any word file or work with the editing with any video file the same processing will be takes place we want to give the input the cpu will take the responsibility and moves the result to the output unit okay that's all for today's video we'll catch you all in next video keep supporting sai suryas academy thank you